Hey y'all, Joe here with Southern Coastal Cooking. Tonight I'm going to get started on something for tomorrow. I've got a chuck roast. You know, I love to cook chuck roast on the smoker. Hadn't cooked one on the Yoda yet. Can't wait to try it. What we're going to do uh, with the good chuck right there, it's about three and a half pound or two. I'm put a little bit of olive oil here on the chuck roast on the side here. And we just kind of rub that in there just a little bit. And then I'm going to get, and this is my favorite stuff to put on roast. This is this uh, Dizzy Pig, and it's called Red Eye Express, and it's a coffee infused rub. Man, I mean, this stuff is fantastic on, on roast and any kind of beef. Probably good on pork or chicken too, but I love it on a roast. It just gives it that extra just bite that you're looking for. And there with that bottle, all it. I'm going to go ahead and give it a nice little coating on each side with this good coffee rub, y'all. Um, like I said, Dizzy Pig Red Eye Express. Then we got it nice and coated down on both sides. And like I said, another thing I like about this rub is lower sodium. Only well, has 140 milligrams of sodium, so that's not that bad. Uh, 0.5 grams of sugar is not that much sugar either. So this is a really good one for roast. But it would be good on um, short ribs and stuff like that too. Anyway, let's get this out in the smoker. Okay, you also got the. Uh, Last 640 heating up for, for the uh, pellets tonight. I'll show you what I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using these Lumberjack barbecue pellets, of course, as always. I'm using this Paris Bordeaux flavor. And this flavor, they said it's got some rosemary in it. It's a flavored pellet. It's supposed to be really, really good. And I think this would go wonderful with the, uh, with the beef, with the roast kind of thing I'm looking for. So I'm going to use these, put these in here tonight. I have a little bit of hickory pellets left in the bottom of the hopper is what's burning right now. Left over from the last cook, but I'm going to, I'm going to finish this off with this wonderful rosemary. Instead it has a little tea leaf in there. I think this will play nicely with that um, with the roast. Very, very good, y'all. All right, y'all, here we go. Now watch how we're gonna do this tonight. Tonight, I'm gonna do it on the upper deck up here. I wanna put the uh, roast on the top. Now, I'm gonna show you there's a couple reasons why I'm doing this, but let's just get the roast up here first. In fact, I wanna go this way with it. Keep kind of a constant temperature zone there. I'm gonna take a probe, and these probes I've got run through the chimney. And I'm going to put this to the thickest part of the meat, y'all. So we're going to get the probe right here in basically the thickest part. I'm going to run this through here. You, know, you don't want to just put a piece of fat or anything like that. I'm going to cram this through right there in, in the thickness of the whole thing. Zoom in just a little bit so you can see how I've got the, uh, the probe in there. Now I've got this, remember, on the top level here. So I have a little trouble with this camera. So we got that. Now next, this is going to be interesting, y'all. What I'm going to do is I have got a pan here, and it's got new potatoes and carrots, baby carrots in here. I am going to slide this underneath here, directly underneath the roast. So move this probe out down here on the bottom. It is freaking hot. Okay, so I'm going to put that right there. Get that underneath there. Now, oh, to this, I'm going to add some liquid. Now, not because I need moisture in the, in the cooker. It's because I, this is going to be part of the au jus for the roast layer. I've got one glass, and this is half and half wine, good red wine, and some water. And I also got a shot of Worcestershire in there. So, we'll pour that right there into my carrots and potatoes and I want to let set that right there y'all it's going to be delicious meanwhile like I said I've set the temperature box over here at 250 I'm going to lower this on down I'm going to let this dude smoke and come morning time y'all this is going to be delicious can't wait for this low and slow chuck roast y'all it's going to be real real good hey y'all Anyway, what we're uh, doing now, I'm just kind of letting this roll smoke. It's been smoking for about 30 minutes. My uh, roast is up to 100 degrees, which that's good. Um, what we're probably going to do is let this guy go ahead and get up to, let's say, 140, 150 tonight. Then we'll wrap him, 
We'll cut the heat down probably about 225 on my controller here because my grill does run, my Yoda runs a little bit cool. And that will put us about 200, 180 and stuff throughout the night. Uh, wrapped, and I'll show y'all when we get to that point. But everything's going good here, y'all. Low and slow, just how we want to do it. Put that perfect little smoke ring on that roast. Give it that, that wonderful kiss of flavor that only this Yoda can do, y'all. Hey, y'all. Well, it's been about three or four hours. We've reached 104 degrees on the roast, the chuck roast. So what we're gonna do now, we can show y'all, we're gonna take it and uh, we're gonna cover it here. So basically what we're gonna do is like, so we're gonna get it out of here. We're gonna, I'll show you, I'll show you. We're gonna put it in with the vegetables, may add a little bit of broth or stock or something like that. And uh, we're gonna get it going on the low and slow again. All right, so as y'all can see, this is full of wonderful bark and everything here. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take the vegetables out. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've got me some tongs here. We're going to kind of stir these around a little bit. Just all that wonderful wine and everything there. I'm going to put some of the vegetables up to the side. Some of what? And what we're going to do is I'm going to put the, uh, put the beef in here, y'all. In here with the vegetables and everything. So like I said, we'll just make kind of a crater here for the for the uh, for the roast. We'll grab it out, right off this top shelf, and just have them create a beautiful crust. Like I said, it's about 140 degrees. It's taking on all that wonderful smoke. And what we want to take on here, and uh, set it right there, y'all. That that's oh, it looks gorgeous. Let me zoom you in just a little bit. So as you can see, it's under a great crust. I'm going to take a little bit of beef stock here. Now, long haul, we're going to pour this in the, uh, in the pan. And what this will do is we'll add a lot of moisture and stuff to this here. Go ahead and pour the rest of this beef stock in here. Then we'll take some foil. Seal this bad boy up. Alright? We want to go ahead and just make sure that we don't have any juices leaking out, steaming out, anything like that. We're going to go ahead and just, just seal it up just like this. That's what we want to see. Then we'll set this bad boy right back up on the rack, right up here, y'all. And uh, we're going to shut this down and let it just uh, cook on right there. Let it cook on in the oven, y'all. And that's what it's going to do for the rest of the night. It's just going to just go low, 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 and slow. I may actually, we're at 150 now on the temp set. I may decrease it just a little bit. Let's see, I may decrease it about 140. I'm um, sorry, we were at 250 on the temp set. I may decrease it to about 240. I just want this to go super low and slow, let all that just mellow out, cook for the rest of the night, y'all. It's going to be wonderful in the morning, I'm telling you. Hey, y'all, good morning. Well, my temperature's reading on the uh, roast, about 199. Maintain a pit temperature of, on my second rack, of about 200 degrees, that's fine. So what we're going to do is, uh, Go ahead and take this off. I'm gonna let it rest for a little while, okay? Inside and let it rest for a little bit. Y'all, right, let's see how this goodness turned out. We'll let it rest here for a little bit already. Look at that, man. That is awesome looking. Let's see how tender. I don't even think we're going to need a fork. Need a knife. Look at that. 
comes right apart there. I'm gonna put that on the plate. That's gonna be a good piece. Oh yes, sir. Break me off a little bit more here. I mean, just literally just just tearing apart like that. Some real good stuff here. Yes, sir. Oh, beautiful smoke ring. All that goodness right there. Let me get down there so I can get me a good little piece. I'm cutting in one of the potatoes there. Come on. Break off. Oh, a little juice everywhere. There we go. So, got me a few pieces of beef on the plate. And now I'm going to get a couple of these potatoes. Maybe some of these carrots down in here. It's going to be some good stuff, y'all. And the potatoes are perfectly cooked too. I was kind of worried about that. Carrots are good. Real good. I think I'm gonna try a little bit of this meat varnish on the side here. This lamb's meat varnish. It's good, a little sweet with just a little bit of heat. We'll set that there on the side. All that's left to do is just give it a taste, y'all. Wow, look at that. Something else there. That bark. A little meat varnish on there. Look at that, y'all. I don't know if you can see them. I mean, perfect little smoke ring on that rose, too. Tender, tender. Let's give it a try. Mmm. 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 <clears throat> That's delicious. Another A plus for a cook on the Yoder 640, y'all. Chuck roast done right on the Yoder. Y'all please like the video, sub my channel. Thank y'all.